That's sometimes scary. I like uh, deal with creepy dudes. Um, mm-hmm. I just like it's on the request sections. So I'm like mm-hmm. delete. Right <laughs> uh-huh. um, but I think like one of like a rising um, like U19 player. She's not mm-hmm. U19, mm-hmm. but she's like getting there. What's up, everyone? I am Tony, and this is the TLZ podcast. Before we get started today. I do want to say, please click the like button and the subscribe button down to lo- down below to show that support for the channel. And uh, Stella is joining us today. Um, not only is she a one-time junior nationals champion, she's also a one-time bronze medalist in junior Pan Ams. And she's also a YouTuber and a model. So definitely make sure to check her out. Check her YouTube out in the description down below as well as her Instagram, which will also be in the description down below. Um, welcome, Stella. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you for so much for having me. Oh my gosh. Of course, of course. Um, you know, a lot of people like, obviously you played badminton for a long time since you were like 10, 11 years old, right? Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of people start out because, you know, the parents liked it or like they liked it, you know, but it was a little different for you. Um, so can you t- tell us a little bit what happened that caused you to start playing? Well, actually it was like my dad used to play. And um, I remember when I was little, like all my friends had like played a sport. It was like basketball or something. They were mm-hmm. super athletic. I'm yeah. like, dad, I want to play sport now. And like, I was like in the garage, like looking through some stuff, old stuff. Mm-hmm. And I saw like a Bouncin bag with like rackets. Yeah. And I was like, hey dad, what's this? Mm-hmm. He's like, oh yeah, that's Bouncin. So we took it out and we just like kind of played in our like front yard. Yeah. And it was like, oh, this is pretty fun. And so he took me to one of the clubs uh, near our house. Mm -hmm. and um we uh, were like oh my dad was like oh we should start having having you train just for fun yeah because like um he saw it was like really bad and obviously (laughs) yeah (laughs) so yeah that's what happened and Mm -hmm. after I think after a month of playing like for fun Mm -hmm. um the coach uh, because I was in star at first yeah the coach uh coach boss who I think was like oh yeah you're pretty good like we Mm -hmm. should sign you up for a tournament like just for fun and I was like oh yeah cool and then after that I was training like seven days a week and I was like okay (laughs) that went from like for fun to like Mm -hmm. real serious and real serious (laughs) yeah I know um yeah but um when did you start really like training like you know putting in the practice to like start playing like kind of like semi-professionally in mm, I think it was like when I was in seventh grade mm-hmm. um I forgot what year I think 2017 mm-hmm. yeah I was like really I loved badminton it was like mm-hmm. one of my passions and it still is right now yeah um it was like my dream was Olympics and I was like uh-huh. yeah mm-hmm. I see I see um I, I remember like we were talking before the meeting and you said like something happened to your mom's um, so, uh, nail place mm-hmm. um, yeah. that caused you to like dedicate more to badminton. Yeah. Um, so her nail salon uh, caught on fire and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> it's, like, crazy. Just, like pretty crazy because like yeah. that doesn't really happen in everyday life. Yeah. Um, yeah. And after that, like after a few months of her not like um, working Mm -hmm. she started to take me to badminton and uh, at first she hated badminton she hated that the fact that I was traveling a lot and I was training a lot I was never home Mm -hmm. and um but ever since she started watching me play she's like oh yeah you're you're decent but you're not good enough and I was Uh like okay cool thanks thanks (laughs) um (laughs) uh but yeah she told me I should start like working harder and mm-hmm. I was like okay yeah sure I'll just do it and after that there was like um a year where like every day after practice mm-hmm. I did like a thousand jump ropes um double jumps and that was like I think 2018 I would say mm-hmm. 2018 2017 to 2018 I think 2018 mm-hmm. though yeah yeah and that was when I was in Hana Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nice nice um as you mentioned before like you first started in star Mm -hmm. and then you decided to move to hana and obviously everybody knows that now you're in gba um what made you move to like these different clubs and do you think you'll move again um i think all the coaches are great everyone has like a different um specialty and everything Mm -hmm. but um I think one thing that I was missing out in each club was um sparring Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And like, for example, star when um, when I first started out, there was a lot of spar and there was like, uh, I remember there was Pauline Tong, there was Henry Tang, Aaron Bai, and like a lot of people. And then after that, there was like, uh, not a lot of people trained anymore. So yeah. I moved to Hana because there was like more sparring again. Um, after I think a few years of seeing at Hana, um, a lot of people uh, were going to college mm-hmm. and not playing anymore. So that's why I moved to GBA. I see. I see. Do you think sparring is the most important part of training? Because obviously, um, it's different yeah, it's yeah, it's a di- uh, it's an important factor of training. Because like without sparring, how would you apply your techniques or yeah. your training? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so before you moved to GBA. Wait, I think, oh, no, 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 my bad, my bad. Um, when you played the um, JIT in Pan, uh, yes. for Pan Ams, you were already in GBA, right? Or you, no, I was, right when in. I was in JIT, when I won JIT, I was in HANA. Oh, right, right, right. you're in HANA. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. did, when you, obviously, like, you made your first Pan Ams in 2019, where you won your bronze medal, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when you were playing the JIT to get into that, did you feel pressure during the deciding game to make it? you know for the first time yeah it, it was like um pressure but no pressure at the same time because yeah. you know I felt like I was the underdog and um I remember going the car ride to mm-hmm. um the gym I was like it's okay Stella it's either like you win okay good for <laughs> you you lose don't worry there's mm-hmm. always a next time yeah so, yeah but when I I played really well that game and mm-hmm. Cody did too. So um, I remember re- uh, re-watching that game. And I was like, oh, wow. And it, I remember after that game, I was like so happy. Like yeah. I was like, I did it for once. Mm-hmm. And I never thought that time would come. Yeah. I mean, you definitely popped up on the radar in 2019. Because <laughs> yeah, even for me, was I, like, that was my year. Yeah. Even for me, like, I, I don't think I really like n- knew you before mm-hmm like recently right so yeah yeah you definitely popped up and then surprised everyone um and after that before you play before you go to play the pan ams right that you made um you played your first uh you won your first junior nationals gold medal with cody lee in u17 girls doubles um did you expect to win that tournament no not at all actually it was like uh our draws were pretty good too but um i didn't really expect to win yeah and then but I did train like super hard and still train super hard. I think like the uh month before uh, junior nationals, I went to mm-hmm. Thailand to train. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, mm-hmm. I remember you said something about that during the meeting we had, right? And yeah. uh but when you play the finals game for that junior nationals, what was your mindset going into that game? Mindset, um, I think it was a lot of pressure too, but yeah. uh, I wouldn't say at that time I was the underdog, mm-hmm. but I, I say like my opponent and my level would be like equivalent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, I, I felt that game was like semi lucky too, mm-hmm. because uh, I remember third set, I wasn't, Cody and I weren't playing well that day. Yeah. <laughs> we have our off and ons. I mean, who uh-huh. doesn't? But yeah. I remember that game, third set. It was like 17 all or something. Mm-hmm. And Cody did a backhand and like rolled over. And we're like, yeah. and after that, like 18, 17, we're like, whoop, 21, 17. And then, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. What were you saying? Go ahead, like, go ahead. No, I, that's, yeah. It was just a that moment after we won. It was like we were tired at the same time, but mm-hmm. happy. We were like, okay, we got through that. We got yeah. through that. Yeah. I mean, winning the first one is is always the toughest because you know yeah. you've never experienced it before. You've never been in that situation. But once you start, you know, winning one, you, it starts becoming a little easier for you to get used to that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you feel after the game? Just ex- like exuberated like from uh, that i felt like that the junior nationals game i was an exuberant as like <laughs> the jt one because yeah i think cody and i were just playing so bad that game where like <laughs> i remember coach christian was like yelling the heck out of us in the back <laughs> yeah it was really funny but after after we changed and like got like rested and mm-hmm. we got our medals we were like pretty happy about it yeah. yeah definitely i can imagine um 
obviously after nationals um it comes junior pan ams right and mm -hmm. 2019 is a big year for you as we can already see yeah uh, so you go to play your first junior pan and what was that experience like um it was a whole i wouldn't say a whole different experience because i've been to international tournaments mm -hmm. but at the same time it was a different experience because you know you're not playing against I went to a Korean tournament like in the year before yeah um, but it was like it was really fun to see um, everyone gathering on their team their country yeah. and like it was a, yeah it was a different experience mm -hmm, mm -hmm. was it like special to represent your country for the first time just was, have USA yeah. on the back mm -hmm, it was yeah because yeah. I remember in the uh, Korea tournament that I played it was just like um, five of my teammates and like mm -hmm. we were just cheering for each other. But like um, Junior Pan Ams was like the whole USA mm -hmm. was rooting for you. And I was like, it's just a special yeah. moment, especially when you're on court. Yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, and, you know, you did win bronze medal first time for your pan, which is really good, actually, because a lot of people when they play Pan Am for the first time, it's like a lot of pressure because you're going so far away. And yeah. then you want to do well. You don't want to waste the money. You don't want to, you know, you want to. Yeah. So it's actually really good that you won a bronze medal. And talking about that game, the game that you lost. Um, <laughs> thank you for sending oh, me yeah. the footage. So that way I yeah. can share uh -huh. it to everyone what happened. Yes. Um, so briefly describe what happened first and then I'll show them the. Um, the okay. Clip. So um, I think Cody and I third set, we were losing 14-19. Mm -hmm. And... Um, or it was 14, yeah, 14, 19. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Um, but we were making a comeback. Cody and I are known for our comeback. Literally, uh -huh. like, we come out of nowhere. We're like, okay, comeback time. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was 19 all. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I think when I was receiving, I pushed to the wrong place. Mm -hmm. I think I was, like, just so nervous. And I, was, I wasn't thinking of what yeah. to do. Yeah. And I pushed right into, I think it was Jessalyn's hand to mm -hmm. her forehand. And mm -hmm. she pushed to um, Cody's backhand. And mm -hmm. Cody dived and did a backhand. And this is the net. <laughs> it rolled. Yeah. And then it rolled back. And I, I remember when I was looking mm -hmm. at that bird, everything was in slow motion. Yeah. Like, it's either whoever gets that point will win. Like, if... Cody and I had rolled over that point, we would have won that game. Like, yeah, yeah. and momentum would have been different, but nice. Mm -hmm. That's ex that's a great description. <laughs> um, but let me show everybody the clip. Yes, it's actually uh, this is actually an edited clip. So, um, let's see it. I'm gonna lower the volume because yes. I don't want it to blast in my ear. And obviously, you <laughs> can't hear it because I have headphones on. But everybody else at home, um, I will add the audio in. Okay, afterwards. So this is Stella. That's Cody. Um, I don't. I don't. I can't, uh, the, the, the front the front person is Rachel. Okay, and then and this, the back person is Jesslyn. Okay, there we go. Um, so the score is tight, and then here we go. you are actually so stupid <laughs> yeah i i just realized like because I, I watched this uh... clip before right and like usually when i watch like like clips that people send me i would immediately like as a player i would just see like oh like what happened that went wrong but mm -hmm. i actually didn't notice this but now when you pointed it out i was like why did she push to the forehand yeah. i was like, like, <laughs> like okay my idea was to push to her body but yeah mm, yeah it just like, i get nerves let's, let's, let's just watch it let's just watch it again watch They're right here when she receives the bird she decides to push to the <laughs> forehand and it wasn't like a very high quality push it was like a here take the shot push you know because it was like high and in the middle and it was just like oh perfect hitting motion Great commentary. it wasn't it wasn't like very no, far in the yeah. corner either it was like right yeah uh-huh i was is... like my idea was 
was okay push to her body stella that's uh-huh. your plan game plan is push to her body yeah but it went all wrong <laughs> yeah i mean that's a good plan though to just, uh, hit the body and then it, it will make them deflect mm-hmm. it but, but i think i should have played it safe just went, went with the back end yeah with the back end yeah yeah, yeah. but now yeah. that i rewatch it yeah N- now i realize <laughs> Poor Cody. Poor Cody. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Poor Cody. Oh my gosh. It's okay. That happens sometimes. <laughs> but <laughs> wait, that was actually really funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually didn't realize that until you pointed out. Uh, like I was like, why did she push to the forehand? <laughs> okay, wait, wait. I remember like a little I wasn't watching this clip, but mm. I remember I thought I pushed like lower, but this was like right yeah, smack it was... your hand. I was like, just like thank you. At that moment, Cody was like is Stella working for the other team? <laughs> I was like, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Imagine, I'm just kidding. imagine. Yeah. No. Totally. no, no. <laughs> um, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, but anyway, after that, you know, you um, after you moved to GBA, you play the open regionals in CBA, right? In 2019, yeah. which is after the Pan Ams when you come back. And you actually won your very first gold medal uh, in singles against Cindy, which uh she's was well, she's part of Z. Um, so I do know her. And how was that game for you? And how did you prepare for it? Um, so I remember uh, during my time at GBA, mm-hmm. I was uh, always staying back um, mm-hmm. after training, even though all my teammates left. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I had like a set schedule for every day. I think Tuesdays was the days I was going to do biking. Yeah. Wednesdays, I did footwork Thursdays I did jump roping and like I repeated that every week Mm -hmm. and then um I remember that tournament I my first round or my first draw I I forgot who was I playing but I that the night before my first game I ate sweet potato fries from T4 oh okay (laughs) and yeah and I got really I started sick growing up yeah oh dang I was yeah I was throwing up um the day I remember before my game I threw up and like I did not want to eat at all like Mm -hmm. I was I felt so tired Mm -hmm. and then that game my parents were like okay it's whatever like Mm -hmm. um if you win okay that's good if you lose don't worry and so that was my mindset my first game and yeah. I won and I remember line judging and I'm like so dizzy I'm like yeah I'm so glad that was over yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. and then uh the next game I the next day I wasn't as um sick anymore mm-hmm. and I felt better uh I played well I forgot who I played I'm like so bad with like names mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> but yeah I it was just um game by game I remember coach Tony was like um just do your best. Uh, mm-hmm. Think of it as game by game. Don't think of it as like oh, winning the whole tournament. Yeah. So yeah. that was my mindset. Um, mm-hmm. And then when I won semifinals and finals, that was on the same day. Mm-hmm. I was like, "What the heck just happened?" Yeah. Two months of moving after moving to GBA, mm-hmm. I won my first singles, and I was like, I was like crying kind of like i was getting mm. teary and i was like okay so hold it back in uh-huh. hold it back in <laughs> yeah yeah like, i'm not the type of person who cries in front of people but yeah i mean it's good <laughs> to show emotions good to show emotions mm-hmm. and yeah. uh i know i know what you mean when you say you know when you get sick and you're throwing up or like going to the bathroom all the time and just like during a tournament it's like people underestimate it sometimes because uh-huh. it really like drains you <laughs> you know because mm-hmm. like i remember yeah. i played a I think during nationals one year singles, I had to play Alexander the next day and I woke up and I was, it was like semis or finals that day too. Um, and I woke up, I was like, Oh my God, I need to go to the bathroom like every five seconds. Oh my God. And I was, I had, yeah. my, and the game was in the morning. So I played Alexander Zane like in the morning and I just couldn't, it was like every mm-hmm. step I took, I was like, I got to go to the bathroom and oh. it was just bad. But oh um, I, so I know what you mean. It's probably like, mm-hmm you know really yeah. tough it was my first time having that too and i was like okay i'm never eating sweet potato fries ever again i mean that's weird yeah. like it's from sweet potato fries like you understand if it was like sushi or something but like uh-huh. sweet potato no, fries i think it was like it, it was like too oily or something 
Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Do you have like a do you, do you have like a diet for like your modeling where you like you can't eat too oily things or like, so like um, I when I played badminton I didn't have a diet but ever since quarantine happened I uh-huh. had to go on a diet or else like I would eat everything in my house. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. When you say diet, is it like something that like people like put together for you or like you just like you know just? It's like not a new a meal plan, but it's like um certain things I can't and cannot eat like I don't mm-hmm. eat a lot of um fried uh, stuff a lot of Pops what I still eat a uh, fried stuff five fried oh fried I was like <laughs> I was is like, that like wait, a, what's five I was like is that a short term for fiber or what what is that <laughs> <laughs> no imagine though no fried fried stuff fried yeah stuff. I don't okay, eat okay. fried stuff I try not to eat oily stuff Carbs yeah. I still eat, like, um, just, like, the right amount, not too much. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know the consequences yeah. of carbs, right? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I imagine it would be, like, t- you know, you have to focus on that because, obviously, you're model, and then you need to make sure you're staying in shape all the time, right? Um, but going back to the uh, regionals in CBA, do you think the training in GBA helped you get that singles medal? Um, yeah, it did. Um, I... I feel like GBA had like a different program from all the other uh, mm-hmm. teams that I was in and um, obviously sparring as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nice. But talking about training, you know, during your bounty career, you also trained in, trained many times internationally in Vietnam, Thailand, Korea, right? Um, obviously Vietnam, I want to talk about Vietnam first because obviously Vietnam is not the first country that comes to mind when you when you talk about badminton, right? So yeah. why did you decide to train in Vietnam? I didn't even know Vietnam had like a training team and like a whole like um I didn't think they were good too. Yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, I remember it was like a vacation and mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want to uh, miss out my skills for badminton. Mm-hmm. So I went to like a local like gym and I met the national players like adult national players and i was Mm -hmm. like wow and they asked me to like play with them too Mm -hmm. and i was like you want me a junior (laughs) player to play Uh with you yeah international yeah um but uh after like training a few days obviously i wasn't like good as (laughs) yeah and so um I, there was like a coach there and he's like oh you should join the junior team the junior Mm -hmm. city team So I did. And uh, after like a few weeks, it was almost time to go home. Mm -hmm. And the head coach was like, oh, Stella should um, stay back and train. Mm -hmm. And my parents were like, eh, we don't want (laughs) to leave our daughter in Vietnam. And like, I was like a baby at that time. So I was like, I don't know if I want to stay here. Uh (laughs) But I decided to stay. And that was probably like... um, it was a fun choice because I mm-hmm. was got really close with the teammates there yeah. and uh, I had family over there too. So I mm-hmm. stayed with at my aunt's house Yeah. and yeah, for, I stayed there for two months. Yeah. I mean, um, obviously you say you were young, right? So it was, it was nice mm-hmm. to have your f- uh, family there. Cause obviously if you didn't know, yeah. Stella is Vietnamese. I actually thought Stella was Chinese like the entire time <laughs> that I knew her until. Wait, I didn't, <laughs> but like, even what about like last names do you look at last names ever because I, I think mean, when I look at last names I know like okay this person okay yeah Chinese, this person you, now that you mentioned it Tran is a very Vietnamese last name yeah but it but when I see you I just thought you were Chinese okay mm-hmm, yeah. But, but yeah anyway uh, but besides Vietnam you also trained in Thailand right where many great players train many a uh, world champion uh gold medalist train um what was that experience like it was a whole different experience when I say it was like so different from Vietnam so Mm -hmm. different from um Korea which I trained before that and different from obviously from the U.S. Mm -hmm. like their mindset is like a whole different level their training is a whole different level and yeah yeah, I I love training there but at the same time it was torture (laughs) yeah yeah I know what you mean because uh my cousin trained there right for Mm -hmm. for a long long time like a couple years I think and, oh um, wow a couple yeah, of she, years I remember yeah. you telling me this but I didn't think it was like I thought it was like no she she trained professionally with them a couple of years and um, wow I she she said how tough it is like the amount of conditioning and everything that they put into it is just a lot right mm-hmm. and so I do know what you mean when you say it's torture and, torture, uh, yeah 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 I thought U.S. 
training was torture but not when you go to thailand it's like yeah yeah a whole different level of torture because their whole mindset is win gold medal at world championships you yeah know, like yeah they don't really like look at like oh let's win this little city tournament or something yeah. like that yeah mm-hmm. um also you mentioned you train in korea um how was the training there like um I it wasn't like a big training it was just coach Johanna just knew like a high school team Mm -hmm. and the high school team was actually really good yeah it was just it was like different I thought like oh high school team like kind of like oh high school in the U.S. we're doing it for fun Mm -hmm. but they were actually good and the some of the people in the high school team were from Mm -hmm. like Korea um junior team too Mm -hmm. So it was like, it was pretty cool meeting them. And they were all younger than me too. So I was the oldest. Mm. I see. I, I actually forgot that Johanna was actually, Johanna's Korean, Coach Johanna. Yeah, Coach I Johanna's forgot. Korean. Yeah. Oh, you thought she was Chinese? No, no, no. I knew she was Korean. <laughs> I knew she was Korean. I, 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 she's, she's not Chinese. Because okay. she's like, she, like, I remember like she went to Coach Pan Am's one year and her and my mom just got really close like coach lay they were both coaches that year and then Mm -hmm. just got really close and they were always talking all the time so i I do know she's korean (laughs) but um (laughs) but between these three countries which one do you think had the most effective training um definitely thailand yeah yeah and i stayed there for a month and when i came back i was like a different level Mm -hmm. but um i I wish like it was really hard to maintain that level though because Mm -hmm. you don't have the same exact like training in the U.S. so you can't it's like when I trained in Thailand my level kind of like went here Mm -hmm. and then when I came back to the U.S. I was like up here Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then but I had to like go down a bit yeah 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 just like a little bit down because you know not the exact same training yeah yeah i mean they're very scared like they have a schedule for everything yeah it's not really like i trained it was like uh six hours a day and like um there's always uh two hours of physical and Mm -hmm. and they have a whole facility yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. they have their own gym and there's uh dorms there's a kitchen yeah and And the pizza was really good thai food i love love thai food too thai food's the best my favorite oh, yeah. thing is my favorite Thai food is green curry, and green curry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really good. The best, especially the one that my girlfriend makes, just really uh-huh, good. Yeah. yeah, I remember like after training, I would eat like plates of rice because yeah. I was so hungry. Yeah, the amount of training they like they give, and like after that, you're just like starving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like you, you know who like you know where I started like green curry was like the you know the ocbc restaurant yeah uh yo they have the best Mm -hmm. green curry i'm telling you yeah if that restaurant is still open like after uh, quarantine (laughs) definitely go get their green curry yeah Mm -hmm. um but anyway okay um so before we get into your modeling aspect of your life um we're gonna do some uh prank calls um just to change it up we're gonna play some Mm -hmm. games and um it's gonna be great so um we actually picked uh people to prank call for each other so um stella has two names and i have two names for her do you want to go first or you want me to go first stella you can go first <laughs> i'm like i'm so i'm bad actually okay i'm actually i end up like laughing like yeah seconds. i'm actually dreading this um let's see <laughs> um so the thing is like we got to say so the topic is basically saying that why would you say that about me so we just basically accused them of talking behind our back because you know that happens and <laughs> and uh so stella wants me to do ryan nebu ryan first nebu. ryan nebu ryan's a good sport i love ryan so <laughs> watch him watch him say how did you find out <laughs> Imagine. yeah so i'm gonna call ryan first let's see if he's gonna pick up i actually haven't talked to ryan since world juniors I'm gonna I'm be mad at him. Okay. Ryan's not even gonna pick up. Hey, Ryan. What's up? Why would you say that about me, bro? Say what? Bro, you know what you said. Wait, what? I'm come, so confused. Bro, come on. Remember what you said when you, you know, talked to those bounding people? What? Wait, I'm 
so confused. What? Bro, why would you say that? Dude, you're capping. Wait, no, I literally didn't say anything. What? Bro, come on. I thought we were tight. Tony, no, you're literally playing me right now. You know, I literally never said anything about you. What? Bro, just because I'm Ricky's little brother, you gonna say that about me? Wait, are you serious? Like, I actually didn't say anything. What? Bro, I didn't know you were like this. Tell me, what did I say? Wait, I'm so... You know what? Like, you know what? This friendship is over, bro. Okay. Well, can you tell me what I said first? Dude, how do you not know what you said? You hurt my feelings. Bruh. You're really? pulling my leg. That, that's what you're going to say? Just bruh? No, you're actually pulling my leg. I literally have not ever said anything bad about you. Bro, your legs are too dark to be pulled. All right? <laughs> what, am I going to hold on to your leg hair? Tony, what? I'm just kidding. I'm just playing with you, bro. You're, oh, I'm, just, I'm just prank calling you. I'm, I'm doing my podcast right now. And uh, like, I'm actually with Stella, and she just picked your name to, to prank call. So you're, you're good, bro. You're good. <laughs> I, was like, I know your ass is captain right I know. Now. I was like, I was like, I'll try to try to think of something to say. And then when you asked me, like, you know, what, what did you say? I was like, I got to change the topic. Got to change the topic. I was like, I didn't know. But yeah. <laughs> all right, all but yeah. All right. Can I use your audio for the podcast, bro? Yeah, go for it. All right, for sure, man. Thanks. Have a nice day, bro. All right. All right you too. All right. Bye bye. Oh my gosh, that was hilarious. He's like, oh what the God. heck is happening? I know. He I was, was so scared. So scared. For I was life. scared. I was scared because he asked me, like, what did I say? And I was like, don't worry about it, bro. You don't know what you said. <laughs> like, you have to know what you said. Yeah, it was crazy. Oh my God. I, okay, should I go next? I'll go cringe. Next. All right. So I, I picked Esther, she, for um, Stella. So let's see it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. Oh man! Wait, what's happening? What's happening? Wait, I want. I I wonder if you should say this. It'd be so funny. Okay, okay go ahead. Yeah, I'll say. It. Wait, wait. So, so, so. Okay, for the people I don't know, Esther, the last Junior World Championship she played, or at least for 2018 one, she lost to. She lost early on to I think it was Denmark, and she was pissed. She was like really sad afterwards, right? And she was salty, and I would make fun of her like during the because we were on the same team right we were on team usa and then i would make fun of her all the time so then it'd be pretty funny if you went like why would you say that about me you lost like hella early on world juniors like in 2018 to that denmark team like that would piss her <laughs> oh off oh my gosh yeah but you can say that if you want to i mean i have okay. much love for esther but it was just a funny moment she was salty about it. okay okay <laughs> maybe okay. you shouldn't bring that up she'll, be, like, she'll actually I'm get like- pretty pissed she yeah, she's gonna, gonna, I'm just gonna be no, don't so say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> she'll watch this podcast and yeah. she'll know that you no, you I, out of this topic. I, I have love for Esther. Okay, Esther, I, I would. I know you were just salty about. You were sad after the game. I was just making fun of you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I wonder if my thing is on speaker. I mean, there's like a speaker button that you can press. Is there on Instagram? On. Oh, I don't know about Instagram. Oh yeah, I don't know. It's probably on speaker though. Yeah. Okay. Just put an extra ear. Yeah. There you go. Oh, she didn't join. Okay, maybe I should call her on Discord or something. Oh sure, sure. I don't know. I didn't know people use Discord that much. Password. Call. Did she just hang up on you? She said nope. It's ringing. I'm so nervous. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, I'm on your AirPod, right? So she can't hear me. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. That way I okay. can talk. She didn't join. She didn't join? Yeah. Oh, you should tell me what to say. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like, you know, Ellen did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I saw, she that. Does, I saw like, that. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, that's hilarious. good. Okay, I'll, let's do that. I think that's more. Yeah, fun. let's do it. Yeah, uh huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, wait. But, okay, man, I should have made a script. Should I, like, recall? 
recall her? You can call, like... yeah, recall her. Okay. Let's stick with the theme though, but I'll tell you what to say. Man, what am I gonna make you say that? I don't even know. What am I? <laughs> I don't even know. Hello. Hello. Uh, Esther, I just I heard what you said about me. Why'd you say that about me? Okay, let's just go with the original okay. plan. That's just you. You, you just do it. I can't. Um. Yeah. GBA what? people told me that you said something about me, and why? Why'd you say that? You know what you said, Esther. Just be like, you hurt I was, my feelings. Why do you sound like that? You don't sound serious. No, like, <laughs> G, the GBA people told me that... Wait, what did I say? I don't even talk about you. Just say you hurt my feelings. You hurt my feelings. Okay, that, that was... Just because you don't model doesn't mean I can't... Just because... <laughs> you... <laughs> Oh my god. That is his. Okay, I want a podcast yeah, with Tony. Yeah, I'm. Oh my. Mm-hmm. my... Like, <laughs> I hope she doesn't see this. Tell her I said hi. <laughs> um, I'm on a podcast with Tony right now. So um, he says hi. Tony, I say hi. Yeah, he says hi back. <laughs> and um, yeah, you should definitely work on your. Acting. Acting. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my god. Burn. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Bye, Esther. Talk to you soon. Oh my gosh, that was so oh bad. I, that last yeah, one. <laughs> that last one. If you said it, it would have been over. Like, <laughs> man, she. That would have been okay. I hope Esther didn't see what I. What? Okay, I didn't mean it. Okay, she can do modeling too. I'm not saying she can't do modeling. I'm just saying like, all right. <laughs> I was just, it was just for the prank. All right. It was just oh, for the prank. I should have said, I should have told her about the Denmark thing. <laughs> yeah. I think oh, she, she would have got, got real yeah, serious. Yeah. Well, if it's about badminton, she would get serious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But man, hopefully yeah. Esther doesn't see this. All right. Nobody, <laughs> nobody tell Esther. If you're watching this, don't tell Esther to watch this. All right. Anyway, let's get back into the um, podcast. So, you know, Esther was talking about acting, right? um you <laughs> real bad okay yeah gotta so work on that <laughs> yeah so esther was talking about how stella needs to work on her acting and that's also right you said the reason why you went homeschooling for the past year so um yep. how does it feel to be homeschooled um it's uh different there's pros and cons of homeschooling and uh i think my program is like a whole different like from uh, different from other programs too because Mm -hmm. mine is like the teachers assign you assignments and you just Mm -hmm. do them so everything is self-taught yeah and sometimes it's like it's so hard because like you don't really understand something and then you're like who do I ask now I mean there are teachers but there's like they have office hours and you can only go into their like their quote quote office yeah like that certain time I see I see um a lot of people actually asked this question um, when I posted the question on, on Instagram. They were really curious to know how you balance, you know, badminton and homeschool and modeling and everything like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So um, I remember last year, um, the 2019, mm-hmm. I was badminton modeling homeschooling. Okay. So badminton, I was training six days a week mm-hmm. and I still usually started training around like three and I went all the way till night mm-hmm. and school I did uh, in the morning and then modeling I most of the time because Mondays were my break days mm-hmm. I would tell my agent I'm only free on Mondays mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's how I did like castings and every mm-hmm. time I booked a job or something yeah I would have to cancel training I see, for that. I see. yeah but it wasn't um often i didn't um cancel training very often Mm -hmm. um but yeah i remember in 2019 that i was training so much that i was like 10 missing assignments behind 
for school and uh-huh. it was like really bad I remember just like every day to training I would be complaining to Henry Henry I have 10 missing assignments <laughs> I could just <laughs> imagine like, Henry's face <laughs> it's like shame on you Stella <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah um I, man I, I can't imagine how hard it is to balance everything and you, you did mention mm-hmm. how you have an agent for uh, modeling and stuff if we're like mm-hmm. people for like not just girls but of course guys as well who wants to do modeling like how do they find an agent like okay so uh, there's like uh, different agents um are obviously a lot of agents around us and um i would recommend doing research on different ag- agents there's a, a website called models.com mm-hmm. and they have a list of agents and there's like a swipe uh swipe down menu to put in your city mm-hmm. and then it shows like different agencies around you like the top ones and even small ones mm-hmm. but uh i would also recommend small agencies because they tend to focus on like their models more mm. yeah and diff- and big agencies sometimes like um they favor one another but mm-hmm. yeah i see i see yeah because obviously when it's like a bigger like mm-hmm. agency it's like so many more people yeah. that they have to manage right exactly um, yeah but um how, what does your typical day look like right now like at home during quarantine like um so in the morning I do I work out for two hours you know keeping up with my stamina for yeah. Valentine. Yeah. but I haven't been doing a lot of skill lately mm-hmm. um and then after that I would just sit down and do homework Mm-hmm. and yeah that's like basically every day yeah. now quarantine is so boring mm-hmm. um once in a while I would uh, my mom would take me out to take pictures for Instagram mm-hmm. and uh just like go like to the mall get some fresh air and then yeah. if I have time if I finish my homework in time at mm-hmm. night I like to do some gaming yeah, yeah. How, how good are you with your gaming I'm really bad <laughs> so bad <laughs> I know. no I'm like more of a mobile player and um I used to play Fortnite uh-huh. and I would only play on my iPad and I was like pretty decent like yeah. I was like pretty decent for a mobile like player I wasn't like try hard person mm. but like I I think Fortnite on iOS like they stopped updating mm-hmm. Uh, something with Apple but I forgot what happened mm. so I had to like move to PC and it's like I hate it I yeah. hate playing on PC and yeah. I'm like really bad but it's just fun it's just a yeah. hobby yeah. yeah I mean I I'm actually the same I actually like to play on mobile better mm-hmm. like more because like I feel like when you play the PC game it takes so long to load and then yeah. you gotta type in there's all this stuff and then it's like mm-hmm. with the mobile you just open it and you can play exactly and there's so many like keys you have to remember okay yeah, a yeah. s w okay c yeah. x z and also and also on the uh pc like there's so many more better like professional players or like great players that like, yeah. just like, study the game but with like mobile they don't really play mobile because they're like they yeah think it's like mm-hmm. not the same or something like that exactly but, yeah yeah but anyway um obviously you know that your whole day's filled up and but you obviously post on instagram almost like every other day probably right um what is the best time to post on instagram oh my gosh um that uh so i have like analytics on instagram Mm -hmm. and uh, it shows like what times i should post Mm -hmm. a lot of my followers are from asia like Mm -hmm. because i have a lot of Vietnamese followers so Mm -hmm. i like to post at night Uh, that's when they are awake i see yeah so that's, that's what i usually post yeah that's very smart that's very but smart. it's like a totally different from people who have like um most of their followers are from the u.s so they post in the morning yeah yeah, yeah i'm like opposite <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah I, I realize that now like every single time like when i if i check my instagram in the morning it will show that you had posted something like last mm-hmm. night or something last night uh-huh. i just realized yeah. that but yeah. Oh, I, try, yeah I actually try to um post the videos like kind of like like the podcast Mm -hmm. like relatively like like roughly like five o'clock u.s time something like that Mm because that that way both u.s and canadians because a lot of canadians watch too and oh really yeah yeah, Uh because we have a lot of canadian players on yeah yeah, Yeah. yeah, i have a lot of canadian players on so it's usually u.s and canada that's watching Mm -hmm. but you know you guys let people are watching let me know if that's a good time for you because 
to me it seemed like a good time you know and same with like a youtube algorithm like depends on what time you post too yeah i actually just posted a youtube that's so funny like literally at 12 yeah what video was it give give it a Um, night real give it a shout out (laughs) uh, okay yeah shout out to my youtube video um it's just a behind the scenes of my recent job at Mm -hmm. Mm case but yeah it's like behind the scenes covid edition Nice. Yeah. Is that Go like check a, it out. Is that like a photo shoot or like? It was a photo shoot, yeah. Photo shoot. Nice, nice. Mm-hmm. Um, now talking about photo shoots and modeling, um, you're all obviously a model. And how did you get into modeling? And what do you love about it? Um, so I got into it because of my mom. Like I literally never thought modeling was a career. I didn't mm-hmm. even know it exists. Yeah. Um, but my mom was like, "Oh yeah, this is a thing, and you should totally try it out." Because um, apparently I have the looks for it. Um, <laughs> okay, and, confident. Uh, oh, okay, confident. got it now. I'm just kidding. kidding. I'm no, just kidding. apparently, just apparently I have yeah. the looks, but I don't I know. mean, obviously you do. You get like so many likes on Instagram and doing all these no. photo shoots. Of course you got it. I wish. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, I did my first photo shoot in Vietnam and uh, it was just like a fun one. My mom's mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, try it out. And mm-hmm. I did. It was really fun. Mm -hmm. yeah and that's what I love about modeling is like meeting new people and everyone is so nice and Mm -hmm. um yeah basically that nice um I I actually have a question like because in my head like if I went to a photo shoot to do like taking pictures like it would be kind of awkward like how do you mm-hmm. pose like why don't you pose weirdly oh and then gosh. somebody like yes. criticize you like uh-huh. why are you yeah. doing that with your hands or like why are you, uh-huh. you know? yeah like uh-huh. you can't do peace sign like peace <laughs> right you can't do that pose. Yeah. yeah you can't do that mm-hmm. so it's like what do you even do you know like, is, do you so i remember my first photo shoot i had no idea how to pose like mm-hmm. no idea and um there was a stylist and they like searched up different poses on mm-hmm. the internet and they're like you see this you want you to do the do that (laughs) yeah and like um so now that i in been in the industry for like several years i know how Mm -hmm. to pose and i know what like photographers want and Mm -hmm. most of the time photographers give you a mood board Mm -hmm. on like uh what they kind of like what is it an editorial or an Mm e-com and um you just kind of pose from there and like you just do random movements and you move around and it just flashes just yeah exactly yeah it it sounds weird at first but once you get in the hang of it it's like pretty cool it's like dancing kind of yeah yeah um but what happens like what happens during like a photo shoot like what's the steps like what do you do on a photo shoot day so um I go in and there's usually robes that you Mm -hmm. change out of because like they don't want to get on your clothes for makeup Mm -hmm. and then you go to hair makeup chair and get your hair makeup done Mm -hmm. and then um take uh your shoe or Mm -hmm. um do some (laughs) testing and Mm -hmm. after that there's a whole photo shoot and if it's like a full day then you had lunch and then Mm -hmm. do some retouches and sometimes Mm -hmm. like um the photographers want you to like change the makeup look so Mm -hmm. take off your makeup and then redo it again (laughs) yeah um and yeah that's basically it it's pretty simple yeah Yeah. pretty straightforward when you do like the makeup and your hair and everything like like if i if i sit at the hair salon for more than five minutes i go insane you know like i'm like this is taking so long like i want to get out of here you know does it take Mm -hmm. like a long time to like it does yeah it takes a while and most of the models are just in the chair looking at their phone (laughs) yeah um yeah I remember um there was this one guy he was in the makeup uh hair makeup chair Mm -hmm. he's just sleeping (laughs) he's like it was in the morning he's like and like while they were doing their hair makeup and I was like that's pretty smart yeah yeah (laughs) yeah because it was like really early in the morning too yeah I can't imagine just sitting there for so long and just uh-huh yeah oh, man it takes like about like an hour because sometimes like they want like different hairstyles and like the hair is like they really funky and cool yeah. but at the yeah. same time it takes so long to do yeah, yeah. I know mm-hmm. I see what you mean um one of the biggest shoots you did was the L Vietnam beauty cover and um which is a huge global magazine right um what was that uh experience like doing that photo shoot um it was it was like a typical photo shoot and um it was in a garage of a like a small apartment oh and, really 
yeah uh uh-huh it wasn't a big studio yeah it wasn't Uh um because it was just beauty so beauty Uh usually it's like half like your shoulders and up Uh and um not editorial or else like usually editorial like you do like really big poses and Mm -hmm. they usually do it in studio Mm -hmm. but this was a beauty cover so uh we were in like a small garage and it was freezing freezing (laughs) cold my i my hands were ice cold and yeah but that's like one of the big aspects of modeling like not everything is luxurious and Mm -hmm. like uh, most of the times when it's like uh cold outside they're Mm -hmm. always um brands and designers are always shooting for summer because it's like upcoming summer and um opposite if it's summer you like shoot in like big coats and you're in the desert shooting coats so dang yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so it's not like a comfortable situation people think like mom oh you just pose and you look nice yeah uh uh-huh yeah Yeah. that's just the outside but um yeah but you didn't mention like we were talking a couple of days ago and you mentioned that the model, the modeling industry can be sometimes a toxic industry. Um, why do you think that it can be like that? Um, I feel like uh, modeling is a toxic industry because there's always like people criticizing you for mm-hmm. like facial features, body, um, mm-hmm. you know, body type mm-hmm. and like people like, I don't yeah that's just the basics of it and like sometimes like um I've never had this luckily there's like always sexual harassment with photographers and like creepy dudes and Mm -hmm. creepy photographers luckily like since I'm still a minor my mom comes with me to photo shoots so Mm -hmm. that's a good thing yeah yeah I'm glad I'm glad you haven't experienced all that stuff because I obviously yeah. hear it like you see it on like news news and not only there's just the news but there's so much awareness about it now mm-hmm. you know because um you know people are paying more attention to it so yeah and it that's is, a good it thing. is a real thing before before it's like oh yeah I, I guess like some photographers were like so big that big that they could just pay it off like to not yeah get it on the news yeah 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 um you're also very active on social media and obviously it's very common for girls to get body shamed or like dms from creepy guys or like <laughs> things like that did you have to deal with all that um how did you um, if you did how did sometimes you i like uh deal with creepy dudes um uh-huh. i just like it's on the request sections so i'm like mm-hmm. delete right <laughs> uh-huh. um for body shaming i haven't had any situation like that mm-hmm. so i'm really thankful a lot of my friends get body shamed a lot so uh-huh. i'm like wow but like I still have to maintain like body shape for modeling and mm-hmm. like um same with badminton too like I don't want to get like too fat where I can't like run on court yeah yeah <laughs> yeah too heavy yeah yeah I remember like in Hana I was like too heavy and Christian Hana's like Stella you're getting really heavy you cannot <laughs> run on court and I'm like oh. yeah what so like there was I remember there was a time when she was like, you can't eat sugar or drink sugary drinks uh-huh. for a whole week. Yeah. And like, you can only have one sugary drink a week. Because I remember I was drinking Starbucks like every day. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. That's oh, not yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but like when before I play a tournament or I know a tournament's coming up, like roughly like a month or like two months in advance, like I would just be like no sh- no soda, no nothing or like just like wow really oh yeah. wow okay yeah that yeah. To me. <laughs> i thought wow. i thought everybody did that i mean oh yeah not me i think like before my mom came into mm-hmm. the badminton world uh, i was always drinking sugary drinks yeah and ever since she came into like the modeling uh, or the badminton world mm-hmm. She was like, yeah, you are too heavy on core, so <laughs> sugary drinks for you. I mean, usually I don't drink too much, like, sugary stuff, but, like, once in a while, mm-hmm, you know, same. you have a soda or something, but yeah, I huh. do watch it, like, before a tournament, mm-hmm. just to, like, yeah, yeah. Stay clean. Like, after the tournament, you're Yeah, and then, you because you have a party afterwards with a team, you know, you go exactly. out and drink Coke and everything. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I did want to, I was just curious, because we were talking about um, DMs and stuff, has, what the heck? <laughs> did you, did you hear that yeah i heard that that's sorry so about that that was uh Don't coach worry. lay that was coach lay coach calling. Lay. you should you should have like picked up like why did you say that about me okay she keeps calling me let me let me uh yeah you pick that up yeah i'll just say oh my god 
Whoa, Don't sorry. worry about it. Yeah. There we go. I just said I was I'm recording. All right. So uh anyway, anyway. Oh yeah, I was I was curious. <laughs> um, has there any been any like famous guys that DM'd you? And like No. No. I <laughs> there hasn't. But yeah. I mm, I I think there was like oh, really? I just, wait now that I think of it sometimes they're like verified people who DM yeah. me yeah but like not like for weird stuff just for yeah. job booking oh I see, <laughs> yeah I, see. I mean have has there ever been a guy who's like who DM'd you and just like it was like a like like they just wanted to like go on a date with you or something you were like oh this guy's not bad <laughs> no uh-uh, uh-uh okay <laughs> no yeah all right guys um, so don't slide in the dms don't slide don't in the dms slide. if you were planning on it don't delete. do it i don't know i'm just kidding <laughs> but maybe me i'm just kidding no <laughs> no if you guys were planning yeah. do it don't don't do it through dms there you go yeah i helped y'all dms is not the not the thing not the place not, not the, the place. place yeah yeah all right now we're gonna move on to the fun question um we have one um, for everybody um yeah. so who do you think is the best looking model Ooh, best looking model. Mm-hmm. That's hard because I think everyone has a different facial feature and like everyone's unique. Yes, yes, um, we understand that, Stella. She's she's just she's putting down the you know the the cushion, <laughs> putting on the cushion. Everybody's trying to unique. put down the cushion. Yeah, everybody's unique. Everyone's unique, but I think one of my favorite models is Adu Akech. She's mm. uh, I think somewhere from like South Africa. I mm. think some but she's like i she's also an influencer so i just I love like her mentality and everything nice nice um next question for the fun questions um who is the best female player in u19 right now in the u.s oh you can't make me choose man i can know I just, like, put down this question? can i be like everyone's unique everyone has their specialty on, <laughs> That's my- i mean of course That's if you don't want to answer it, if you don't want to answer it we don't you don't have to answer it but uh, you have someone in mind have someone in mind you can say yourself if you want to if, yeah. me no i'm just kidding no, <laughs> I'm, I'm not like that no i don't i definitely don't think that i'm the best player. um i don't know I'm trying to like go through the list of yeah. players because i i can't remember if some graduated yet oh okay um but i think like one of like a rising um like u19 player she's not mm-hmm. u19 but mm-hmm. she's like getting there she mm-hmm. is allison lee I um see. allison if you're out there hey yeah. <laughs> no but she uh she's improving a lot and yes, like yes. one of the top players in u19 doubles yeah. yeah oh yeah she's playing u19 already so yeah so basically nice. i would call her u19 already nice that was a good pick that was a good pick mm-hmm. perfectly avoided all your friends good job just avoid all the the u19 people and then just went with the oh my god that's fine that was a good answer that was a good pick I, cool cool nice um next so we're, now we're gonna get into the viewers questions now we're gonna get into the oh, viewers questions fine. um so somebody asked who inspired you to be a model who inspired what well, my mom because yeah. my mom was like you should try it out mm-hmm. but like i didn't like inspired inspiration is like if i look up to mm-hmm. i would say is bella hadid she's like mm. an icon right now yeah so. i don't i don't know her but sounds you should check her out yeah she's like really big right now too so oh really i'll, yeah. I'll check her out check her i mean out, yeah. i'll just see who she is but yeah <laughs> um next one um singles or doubles or mixed specialty oh hmm i I say maybe singles because uh, it's either the mm, singles or doubles because I think there's like the 2019 year I was like all out doubles. I Mm. love singles as well, but I just wasn't as good as like in doubles and also thanks to Cody because she was like my partner as well. Uh, Doubles and I think after uh, when I moved to GBA, mm-hmm. I would say singles because Coach Tony was like, you're becoming a singles player. So and I was <laughs> like, okay. Uh, yeah. So well, I'm singles. surprised Coach Tony said that because he's a doubles player himself. Mm-hmm. I think because um, 
most of his players are doubles and mixed yeah. players so yeah. he wanted a singles player and I was like yeah. I'll be that person <laughs> so I'll Perfect. dedicate my time and that's what I did I did dedicate mm-hmm. my time and I really helped everything paid out that's good I that's really hope I made my coaches proud mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um do you still train do I still train? Um, at home, I still do uh, cardio, like I told you, keep up yeah. my stamina. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to come back on court because, you know, because of COVID and everything. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not sure when I'm going to come back on court. Yeah, everything, the schedule is really messed up right now because of COVID. Yeah. For uh-huh. yeah. yeah. Um, Are you still training? Like, um... uh, I'm not. I mean, I'm not. I'm, tr- I'm exercising again, like for mm-hmm. the past month, like getting back in shape. But not yeah. for like, not for badminton. Competition. Okay. Yeah. Just, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just to stay in shape and shape. don't look, you know, <laughs> obese all the time. <laughs> yeah. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. Um, next question. So, how do you balance modeling and badminton? Um, modeling oh, we actually went through this already. We, yeah, we did. Did yeah. we? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but basically, the- that just like it was mostly badminton, though. Um, modeling just came in like, um, my agent would be like the day before we like hey you booked this job I'm like what yeah. the heck yeah. so I just had to cancel my training but it wasn't yeah. often yeah. so last question did you do online school all your life um no I did not I only started online school in high school year mm-hmm. so when I was a freshman yeah I see so yeah. I'm I'm glad that I uh, had a life before that <laughs> do you prefer I, there's like oh, yeah. pros and cons yeah, yeah. um so for the pro is that um my schedule is like way more flexible yeah i'm able to train more obviously and whenever yeah. like um i go to castings for modeling mm-hmm. um the con is that you really don't have a life like yeah. other than badminton um i didn't get to see my school friends anymore mm-hmm. i like stopped hanging out a while mm-hmm. with them yeah yeah i was like living under a rock and i still do but <laughs> yeah. like, at least everyone knows how i feel now mm-hmm. because covid and everyone's online school right yeah 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 so it's basically the same that. so it's basically it's your life is the same except you can't go out and get boba mm-hmm. or starbucks mm, yeah but wait okay one thing that's not the same is that my program mm-hmm. i don't actually have classmates oh okay yeah so everything i told you everything is like assigned and you just do them it's self-taught oh. while like most of like online um like programs mm-hmm. and like what everyone's doing right now is zoom classes where yeah. like the teacher teaches you on zoom yeah, yeah i don't have that yeah yeah that's wow. the only different thing so that, that's why i'm saying like i don't meet people well i'm sure it makes you like so much more independent and True. to be able to learn stuff on your own yeah lucky lucky i'm getting prepared for college that's what i'm doing yeah yeah because yeah. i heard college is everything self-taught i think i know what you're talking about like about your online class because like i used to take this online course and it's basically you just teach yourself and really? i couldn't yeah it was tough for me I, I can't yeah do. that's what, like my parents had to hire me a tutor because they literally did it's not tough. understand it's like, tough Oh my gosh. It's like the words that like in the textbook, I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. 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 I definitely know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that is the last question for um, the podcast. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, make sure you follow me and Stella on Instagram. Um, definitely check her Instagram out because you know, she's obviously posting great pictures every other day. Um, also check out her YouTube channel, which will also be in the description down below. And um, besides that, make sure to click the like button and the subscribe button. Show that support for the channel. And uh, we are out. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Stella. Thank you.